make sense as it being like the first black um, independent. I mean, just the first everything along down the list, like this. Uh, just whenever I think about the Haitian uh, Revolution, it's just a lot that comes to my mind. Because uh, even as even as we hear the Black Nationalists, the Pan Africanists, and Black Separatists, uh, Haiti is the implement. I believe that end game vision that everybody has, Haiti is. Yeah, yeah. That's what I feel. I feel like Haiti was a. Um, <sighs> I want to be careful, I don't want to say nothing just too long. But I just feel like it's the... Um, I mean, I understand what you're saying. It's a, it's a template, I yep. feel, we all should follow. Not even just the battle aspect. That's what a lot of people say. You know, of course, revolution is bloody. But even as uh, their society progressed afterwards, um, a lot of people don't... Uh, well, you had two sides to it. You had basically a kingdomship, which a, a monarch, you soon had a royal friend, the kings and queens. Then on the other side, you still had basically the uh, president, yeah, like a traditional, like a traditional republic. Yeah. republic, still in Haiti. And then, you know, not even looking at the Dominican Republic. But yeah, I, that's, but that's I mean, separate, we are, that's yeah, a that's, whole yeah. separate situation. But I mean, that's, that's it right there. Because I mean, they reunited on. I feel it took spirituality. Of course, um, the conditions is what inspired such. I don't, a lot of people say, well, why did it happen there and it didn't happen here? I feel like. But we fought here. So we did. Yeah. But I feel like the landmass, in a sense, yeah. played a very. People forget that because not only Haiti, the Caribbean, uh, the, right. the whole, it's very um, it's got mountains and hills, right. so you could use that to your advantage. You right. grow up in there and you can hide and Just like in Jamaica with the moon. Yeah, right. same, same strategy. Use the same strategy, so you don't have that so much over here. Plus, it's pretty big. And, then, big, and then they were in the majority, too, over here. You, oh, like, you know, collective pockets true. of small minorities. True. Or, I don't know. It's just a so lot. It's a different battle. Yeah. But I mean, this is the template because. Um, on Saturday, I did an interview with a, a sister in Togo that's involved in the fighting after the dictatorship there. And much of she, what, what she wants to do with Togo is uh, in the tradition of Haiti in terms of uh, making Togo a safe haven for all African people. Because mm. she, she told me that one of the things that she would like to do is to do like Haiti and give uh, Togo citizenship to every person of African descent that wants well, to come back home. I would like that, though. Yeah. That's nice. So, I'm, uh, but I still feel like we as black people need to take this. As well, but that's just another I mean, thing. In game if you can have dual citizenship like that, you know, have, you yeah, have yeah, it. Very true, very true. So, yeah, they're fighting a dictatorship there, but that's our end goal. So, I mean, why I think the Haitian Revolution is, is significant is not just for the people of Haiti, but for all African people, because, right. like you said, that's a template for a, a lot of our struggles, right? And even, I mean, the struggle was here after the Haitians won their freedom. True, a lot of enslaved Africans are looking at that like, well, we could do the same do thing, the same. that's right. why, yeah, slave masters. They did everything they could to prevent you know, information from Haiti right. you know, coming into the United States. From reading, right. reading. But, I mean, a lot of us you know, couldn't necessarily even read. read but, right. but they went to the point of any African from the French you know, Caribbean, they didn't want them coming into the United States because mm. even the Africans that couldn't read here, they would interact with those people and right. you know, they'll tell them, well, Inspiring hey, this has been happening in Haiti. Right. So they just wanted to cut them off completely from that information. I mean, I mean, I mean, well, even when I say it's a wonderful thing, I feel like, all right, this is how I'm going to compare it to uh, just me and my eye, that I've always had this understanding, all right, you go to school, boom, 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 you get white supremacy history 101. Oh, and I mean, even just fast forward it to the American Revolution, we heard that these certain people didn't want to pay tax, so they split from wherever they came they from. British, yeah. You know, and then they came over here and miraculously found some land that was just to their abundance and they had everything they needed and they settled the colony little by little. They grew like a virus over the whole continent. But anyway, starting with the 13, they established colonies, already made their states, killed off the native people, and then they claimed years later they had to fight the British to keep hold of their so-called 13 states, which eventually grew to 50. And uh, I even have issues with that. I think it's a lie. 
Honestly, that makes sense. Uh, which part of that? The American Revolution, where they say that they got their independence, because uh -huh. America still has the answer to the crown of the United Kingdom, and still you have the uh, bankers in that. I mean, it wasn't really a fight, fight for independence. Right. Even when you talk about the taxation, right. th that was the, really the main issue, was the, right. the problem with the taxation. And even then, the funny thing about that is the reason why the Americans were taxed, right. because the British were spending money to defend the American colonies from the Native Americans. True. So they were actually you know, benefiting from being a British colony, but they just right. didn't want to pay the taxes. Right. They went along with that, but it wasn't necessarily an issue with independence because they got the independence and they continued along the same policy exactly. as the British. So, uh, and see, that's why I still like, it's like, what is really independence in their, in their eye? Because, I mean, how can they be independent, but... I mean, I see what they can mean. I see what they can mean. I understand the presidency and you got a vice president. But look at it in other places you have are you got a king and a queen and you got a prime minister. America doesn't have a prime minister. We still like I said, everything we do is still answering over there. You got NATO, the North Atlantic uh tribes organization, you got the EU, you got the United Nations. Everybody's still clustered together. It's still the same thing it always once was. It's still the Holy Roman Empire in my eye. It's just they do it with a new name and try to act like it's I something. I think you different. have to look at too is like whenever two groups of Europeans are fighting with mm -hmm. each other, it's always a fight to see who's going to be that dominant group. Mm -hmm. It's never you know a, a fight to for end real. you. Yeah, to end to end uh, European domination. Even right. when you look at the World Wars, World War Wars about two sides of Europeans fighting over the rest of the world. After World War Two, they both destroyed each other and who right. took over. United States right. and Soviet Union, and then they had that fight to see who gets the right sign the world Okay, so you're talking about control. Uh, each independent nation, supposedly independent nation, wants to have their own control. Right. Controlled by the people that live there and governed by the people that's, that's there, rather than having to be dependent to some other country mm -hmm. across the pond, so to speak. Right. So, in a way, it, it, it is about independent, but it's also you're not breaking that chain mm -hmm. of group because all Caucasian nations are one group, period. And yeah, that's sure. what he's saying is that who can be top dog? Top dog. Yeah. That's what Hitler wanted to be. He wanted to be top, top dog. dog. And, yeah. and he, even, you see, he, he was a template for white supremacy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, but, but he's, he's not been the only one. Right. It's true. It's no, and because the thing is, when you look at Hitler's work, another thing that I speak about in, in schools here, you never actually have to read Hitler's work. Hitler didn't just come out of nowhere. There was a lot of people that influenced Hitler because all of his ideologies, they were there already. The Aryan you know, right. supremacy, that was already there in right. Europe. Even anti-Semitism, that was, was already, already there in Europe. So everything that made Hitler was already in existence in Europe. Sure. Sure. I mean, even look at, we can look at um, the KKK, which was organized before uh, Hitler. Who were some of the people that they were targeting? Not only African-Americans, they used to lynch Jews. Jews as well. Europe. So that, not, nothing about Hitler or the Nazis were unique. That all of that was in existence. Beforehand, even on the, the concentration camps that you know they teach us about in schools, sure. they never teach us that the British had their own concentration camps sure. in Kenya and they used to torture, sure. horribly torture the Kenyans there. So Hitler didn't do anything that no other European right. power before him or even after him hasn't done. I mean, mm -hmm. Leopold before Hitler. He used to get that. In Belgium, I mean, it was neat. Well, I mean, of course, with colonialism, Caesar Rose and everybody that came through, I mean, they was pounding, I mean, they was killing up. Millions upon millions upon African people. I mean, I mean, like I say, to me, that's the worst. Not just because I'm black, but that was the worst Holocaust of all. I mean, killing millions upon millions. I mean, just the yeah. slave trade alone. Yeah, alone. Like, the estimates range from like 50 million to 100, 100 million. million. And you're just talking the slave trade. You're not even getting to you know Belgium colonialism and all all that kind of stuff. Because you know, in the Congo alone, the estimates for how much the Belgians killed were like 50 million. Mm, exactly. Know? And that's just. One African African country. Because when you go to Zimbabwe, well, what they call Rhodesia, yeah, Cecil Rhodes killed up millions yeah. upon millions. What's in the bit? Went in there, machine guns, and was just mowing. And all. He's praised. Yeah. He's the hero. He still have a scholarship named. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In Eurocentric culture, they, those are the heroes. I think it's no different. Uh, going even back to the Revolutionary War here. As an enemy, George Washington smited his enemy with this is true. The difference is if we try to do that as black people, then we are the radicals. Right. And 
Black Panther, those radicals, right. and they wasn't even killing anybody. But that's the way the society mm. is going to look at things based on who's in control. Mm. And when you don't have that control, you then are subject to the rules and regulations that the, the, the person or people that's in control is going to put out on it's going to have set up for you to, to follow. But we know that that's not, that's not good for us. It never have been good for us, and never will be good for us. Uh, so I can, I can understand where they're coming from, and because I certainly understand that there is no difference between Europe, any country in Europe, right. and America. It's, right, it's, it's the same, one and the same. same people. They, they believe in the same thing, and they want to all want to control, they want to want the board to look at them as being and what they As the way they push things as they are the all-knowing people, exactly. the most intelligent on the planet. And we know that that's not true. Not at all. Not true. So, but that's, that's what we follow. And they always want us to look at them as the majority. We know that they are not the majority. They're less no, they're than 10%. Minority on they're less, less than 10%. But you got this minority that's controlling almost if not controlling every country, at least they've got their foot in the door, right. they are foot and actually pushed out of the African countries, but they're still there. Right, they're exactly. Still, they're still present and they're still somewhat causing, uh, cause, well, they're definitely causing uh, a whole lot of disruption. Mm -hmm. And like he was talking earlier before he knew that, he was talking about Congo. I mean, the French is they're strong there and they're never going to be there. What really should happen, same in all of those countries, and it should happen also in South South Africa. Doesn't matter whether those people, the, the Dutch, came there and they colonized. Thank in other words, they got the land. They all need to be gone. They gotta go. Really, they, they need to go back to the right for people that of that country, and they need to be teaching history of their country, not Eurocentric history, because what good would it does it do those people in those in those countries in Africa? To know why would they want to know European history? It's not helping them right. learn anything about their ancestors. Instead, it's helping the other side, right? To indoctrination. Absolutely. So that that chain has to be broken. That chain of thought has to be broken. I don't know who who's going to do it because then that people just don't seem to. From what I'm seeing, what I've read, people most you know, they are some. It's always somebody, but as a whole, as black people on this planet, we, don't, we seem to be unconscious to that. Scared, I feel. I mean, I think that's scared as shit. Yeah. Excuse so, me. So, but that's why that example with Haiti is a good example. So no. they was not afraid. <laughs> they and I, even though they still teach in French history, <laughs> I'm sure. Well, they're not. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that's, that's the issue too. The Haiti run into yeah. people ask, "Well, why is Haiti so poor?" It's because of that revolution. Right. Europeans did everything they could to crush sanctions. You know, Haiti. Yes, I mean sanctions. And yes. Just like colonial indoctrination, to where to the point where yeah, a lot of Haitians really embrace you know France and think that they're French. I remember reading one Haitian poet who even said um, Haiti is the Black France. True. So, like, that's why the psychological warfare that Europeans put on us—that's really the most critical thing to uh, to address. Because if you can't free the minds of African people, then, uh, that's it. That's the biggest one. And that's